You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options insider.com. Welcome to the Options Playbook, the program where we break down cutting-edge option strategies and explain how you can incorporate them into your own portfolio. Whether you're looking to grow your capital with some offensive maneuvers or protect your investments with defensive plays, you can find them all in the Options Playbook. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA, and SIPC. Now, let's open the playbook and get started. Welcome to Options Playbook Radio. I'm your host, Brian Overby, Ally Invest Senior Options Analyst and author of The Options Playbook. Well, we took uh, some time over the holidays to address some of your listener questions, and we had a couple of great discussions, Mark Mark Longo and myself. Mark uh, always likes to fill in when we answer some of the listeners' questions and help me out. So now let's get back into it. Uh, we have a lot going on in the markets. Uh, recently, there's been a lot of news with Iraq, Iran, uh, other things just in general, all-time highs in the S&P 500 index, uh, all-time highs in a lot of stocks. So I'm going to kind of stick with the theme that we had a, a couple of shows back. We talked a little bit. It was episode 291 uh, of Options Playbook Radio, otherwise known as OPR. And we talked a little bit about pay later puts in the spies. And I think I took a time. I think it's time to discuss the same type of concept, but we're going to look at it in a stock like Apple. Uh, Apple has made a huge run-up over this year. It's up over 80%. So if you own Apple and you have it in your portfolio, congratulations. You did really well this year by owning Apple. Uh, surprised a lot of people, including a lot of the analysts, that it's just made such a – it's been on such a bull – tear recently. Uh, but we have earnings coming up. Earnings are on the 28th of January. And even if the earnings are good, who knows what might happen with Apple after a big run up in the stock. Uh, I'm taping Options Playbook Radio the, uh, today. The markets are closed. It is January 8th. It is a Wednesday that I'm taping this. Apple was actually up $4.80 today. So the market in general had a strong day, and Apple has had a strong day to go along with it. Uh, Apple last traded at 303 $303.19, up $4.80 on the day. So I think this is a great opportunity to try to take the concepts that we talked about uh, 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 about three weeks ago on the pay later put strategy in just a general portfolio situation, talking about the spies and the ETFs. And we're going to look at a trade to try to protect an Apple position. Now, as always, this is not be, meant to be a recommendation, and especially if you've never done what's called a ratio spread, where you're selling one option contract to try to pay for two option contracts. That's also known as a back spread. I like to re- reference it as a pay later put, and I'll, and I'll get into that reasoning, which I did talk about, you know, on episode 291. But overall, here's the concept. So let me set this up for you. We have 100 shares of Apple, or we may have more. But for every 100 shares that we own, a lot of people will sometimes go out and say, well, gee, protective puts make a lot of sense. But protective puts get very expensive, especially around earnings. So in this instance, if I look at what the stock at 303, 
Um, the put that we're going to deal with today is the 287 50 strike put, okay? So that's $15.50 away approximately from where the current uh from the current stock price right now. So if you take that and you divide that by Apple by the current stock price, I'm sorry, $15 by the current stock price, we're talking about a 5% move. And if you're going to do that, so that first 5% is basically your uh, deductible, if you will, if you bought a protected put on Apple. And that put right now is trading on the asking price of $4.30. So you have to add that into your potential loss too and say to yourself, well, would I be willing to buy this put I'm going to have that first $15.50 worth of risk, and then I have to add on top of it the premium that I'm paying for it. Now, overall, that's not a bad strategy if you're thinking, I'm going to spend $4 to try to protect my 100-point gain over the last seven months in Apple. So if you look at it that way and that rationale, well, if you want to remain long Apple, I would say that if I did this protective put, my market outlook is that I'm still bullish but I'm nervous. I want to make sure that I fixate a sell price on Apple. And there's nothing wrong with that. It's a very simple, straightforward strategy. Many people will do it. Uh, if we go out to February 7th, that would contain that earnings date. Uh, February 7th is about 30 days away right now. And you would, the earnings are expected right now, anticipated, I should say, to be on Oct uh, January 28th. And Apple usually announces after the close. So if I look at Apple and I look at that strategy, that's an okay strategy. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. But you've got to realize that if I do this, I'm hoping to basically lose that $4.30 because I really want the price of that put, I want that to go to zero because I want Apple to continue up. And that's my whole process. Uh, today it went up $4.80. It basically would have paid for that put. It would have paid for your protection. Now, that puts a little bit inflated because, like I said, they're going to be announcing earnings on the 28th, and this is a February, on the 28th of January, and this is a February 7th expiration. Now, all that being said, basically that was a show in itself to talk about buying protection in Apple going into the earnings announcement in, at the end of January. But another alternative is to look at a pay later put or a back spread is another name for it, or it's a ratio spread. So in this instance... Um, I'm going to keep that same concept, but I'm just going to look at catastrophic insurance. So instead of paying up front for my protection, I'm actually going to receive a net credit to the account. Now, there's going to be additional risk above and beyond uh, what I might have paid for that actual protective put. There will be additional risk to the trade. But if I am correct in that Apple will continue on up, I actually receive a net credit in the account that can help me pay for commissions on my, on my option trades, if you will. It won't be a lot, but, but it'll be something, right? So I don't have any risk if the stock continues on up. All right, so here's the trade. Uh, Apple, as I mentioned at the beginning of the show, is at 303.19, $303.19. We're going to sell the 300 strike put we're going to sell one of the 300 strike puts it's going to be the february 7th expiration then we're going to go out and buy two of the february 7th expiration 287.50 strike puts okay so the width between the 300 and the 287.50 is 12 and a half points all right now we're going to buy two of those if we do this, we're selling the more expensive option contract and we're buying the cheaper option contract. We can sell one put and use those proceeds to pay for two of the cheaper option contracts. In this instance, the put that we're selling is trading uh, at the midpoint around 875-ish, somewhere in there, just rounding off. And the one that we're buying at the midpoint is trading for about 420, about. So if I look at the Ally Invest uh, multi-leg quote box, if I look inside the workbench, I see that the midpoint for this trade, if we were to execute at the midpoint, which is never a guaranteed fill, right? But at the midpoint, right between the bid and ask, we're talking about a net credit of 30 cents to the account. So a lot of people are attracted to this because we're receiving a net credit to the account. 
The best way to really explain the strategy, yes, it is a back spread in that or a ratio spread. But what I like to think of it as, I'm selling a put spread to help pay for my protection. So if I just sell the 300 strike put and buy one of the 287.50 puts, that would just be a bull put spread or a put credit spread that would want the market to go up. Now, I re whatever credit I receive, I'm going to actually use that credit for that short put spread to pay for an additional put. And then that protects me from 287.50 all the way down. Right, So I do get that protection. Now, it's going to be kind of catastrophic protection in that if the market just kind of goes down, right, and it goes down to 287.50 and it just happens to sit there and end right on that price at expiration, well, that's the worst case scenario here in our back spread in that uh, we would lose on our short put spread and our long extra put wouldn't help us out much. So that's, that's the worst case scenario here. So that means the width of the spread, which is 12 and a half points, would be our maximum loss here minus the net credit received the account. So that would be $12.50 is the width of the spread times that by 100. For every one by two ratio that you do, it would be times by 100 or $1,250. And you're going to have to have that money in your account because that is the maximum loss. Okay. Now, if I put the spread on and the market tanks, it goes down 10, 15, 20%. Well, that additional put helps out and it actually offsets the losses that we would have on the short spread. So from two, $287.50 on down, the, the puts that I own are going to help me out immensely. And so then I get the protection. So for every 100 shares that I own, now remember, I'm assuming you own 100 shares of Apple in your account you would do a one by two ratio spread known as a back spread. All right, so I threw a lot of names around, and if you go to optionsplaybook.com and look up back spread, you'll see AKA because there's a lot of different names that, that uh, reference this strategy. And the one that I like the most when I'm thinking about this as a protective strategy is a pay later put. So the concept here is that I'm not paying for the put up, so I'm not paying for that protection to, on the initial onset. I'm not paying up front for it. So if I'm wrong and the market just kind of trickles down a little bit, well, I'm going to have to pay later at expiration basically for the put. And you're going to have the margin requirement to do it, but that's the concept. That's why the name pay later put sometimes applies, and I think it applies more so when you're doing it as a hedge or a protective strategy. Now, here's the good news. If I'm dead wrong, well, I wouldn't necessarily be dead wrong. If I am wrong, and Apple does not go down, and I, and I stayed in it because I did this, and Apple continues on up, well, all these option contracts would expire worthless, and if I did this for a net credit, I was able to fill at that midpoint, I would get to keep that net credit. I'd be able to keep that $0.30 cents or $30 for every one by two that I did, and the market would go up, and I'd also make the money on Apple, and I would make the money on the spread. So... In this instance, if I'm really nervous on Apple, I would probably look at buying a protective put. But this is an alternative. This is, a, this is just giving you catastrophic insurance if Apple were to give up half of that 100-point move after they announce earnings on the 28th of January. Okay. Now, we have a lot of time on this trade. We have 30 days to expiration. The trade is relatively inexpensive because we're also – trading at a higher implied volatility than normal because an Apple, Apple is going to be announcing earnings. So because of that, the implied volatilities are already up to about 30%. And that will hurt your position. Um, <clears throat> if implied volatilities come in after the announcement and the stock goes right to your peg price, 287.50, well, that would be your worst case scenario because your protection wouldn't really help you out. Now, the biggest benefit of this, though, is we are going out an extra week after the earnings. And part of the reason why is that the only way you can lose that maximum, that $1,250, is if you're right at expiration and you're right at that strike price uh, that you bought, uh, $287.50. That's the only way we can lose the maximum. To start with, this trade has very little risk overall. As long as there's time premium in the option contracts that you bought, 
um, even if the stock comes down to 287.50, those become at the money option contracts, and that's where the bulk of the time premium sits. So it's an interesting trade that has a little bit more upfront cost overall because you do have the margin requirement, but you get it done for a net credit. And as long as you get out of this trade right after earnings, if you stick around, you're going to have your, the, the maximum loss on the trade would be pretty hard to actually get. It is possible. Everything's possible. But just like on a butterfly, if you do a butterfly, it's very hard to get the maximum upside potential because it's got to stop right at your short strike on the butterfly. Well, in this ratio spread, it's very close to a butterfly. We're just not buying the other wing, right? We're selling and at the money option to pay for two further out of the money options. And if we sold another one, it would just be an upside down butterfly overall. So moral to the story is if I do this trade, um, I can stay around as long as I want. If Apple goes down tomorrow, I could close this out and just remain long the stock going into earnings. I can ride it into earnings. If earnings co- happens and the market actually just kind of trickles down, well, I just close out the trade right away, and I try to salvage as much time premium as I can on that trade. So it's an interesting alternative, and this is why we say it's a paper trade, because if you've never done this as a protective strategy, you want to make sure – that you understand what's going to happen with the option prices. And inside Allen Invest, we have an option pricing calculator. And I strongly suggest, if no matter who you're trading with, if you find an options pricing, uh, uh, options pricing or a profit and loss calculator or a what if, what if this happens type calculator, and just look at it. Look at it, what happens as expiration approaches, how this entire thing moves, what happens if volatility comes down a little bit. It's very important that you familiarize, familiarize yourself with the pricing of this strategy before you ever attempt to do it, as always. So I gave you a, a great little paper trade. So now we got a couple of them. We have one in the SPY that we talked about about three weeks ago. And now we have one on Apple, and Apple is by far the, the one of the, well, I wouldn't say by far, but it's one of the largest holdings that we have here at Ally Invest. So I know a lot of people out there have it in their accounts, and congrats, because Apple has done amazing over the last year. All right, that's it for this episode of Options Playbook Radio. If you have any questions you'd like to, like to ask me, you can email them directly to me at theoptionsguy at invest.ally.com. I want to say thanks for listening. We'll see you same time, same place next week. Until then, may all the options you bought finish in the money and all the ones you've sold finish out. The Options Playbook is brought to you by Ally Invest. Anything mentioned today is for educational purposes and is not a recommendation or advice. Options involve risk. Please refer to ally.com slash invest slash disclosures to review additional risks involved with trading options. Securities offered through Ally Invest Securities, LLC, member FINRA and SIPC. You're listening to the Options Insider Radio Network, the home of the Options Podcast. For more quality options programs, visit theoptionsinsider.com or search for Options Insider Radio Network in your podcast provider of choice. Listeners can also access all of our programming through our mobile app available on the iTunes and Google Play stores. Select programs are also available via live stream at Mixler.com slash options dash insider. That's M-I-X-L-R dot com slash options dash insider. Don't forget to follow along with your favorite programs and submit your own questions for the hosts at Twitter.com slash options, StockTwits.com slash options, Facebook.com slash the options insider, or via questions at the options 